Hey guys, Jimmy Song here uh, off chain. Um, I, I wanted to answer a question that a lot of people have been asking. Uh, what is a full node? Why would I want one? Um, and you know, sort of go on about that. Uh, the idea uh, of a full node uh, is, is so that you can be sort of sovereign over your own stuff. And th this is the whole idea behind Bitcoin is that um, you can control everything about your own transactions. Um, and that includes privacy. And, and really, when you run a full node, that's, that's what you're getting is that you, you have this ability um, to stay private with your transactions. If you run a lightweight client, uh, a non-full node, this is what you would call like an SPV wallet or something like that, um, you're having to trust somebody else. Um, and it's, it's not a high level of trust. It's mostly around privacy. Uh, but you know, you, you do have to trust somebody. You have to trust that they're not going to leak information. Um, and and you're, you're going to have to trust that they're not trying to figure out who you are to steal from you or something like that. Uh, but you know, the, the idea of a full node is that if you run a full node yourself, you don't have to trust anybody else. Um, you know, that said, you know, it, is it completely necessary? Um, I don't know. I mean, like for the most part, if you, if you have, uh, an SPV wallet, that's reasonably secure. You don't have to worry too much about a full node. That said, uh, if you want to be sovereign over your own stuff, if you want to sort of, uh, get the next level up, uh, in terms of privacy, um, then, then you're going to want to run a full node. I, I would say like, uh, the lowest level would be sort of keeping, uh, things on an exchange. The exchange knows everything you're sort of, uh, exposed to counterparty risk and things like that. Um, and then sort of the next level after that is controlling your own private keys. Uh, and this could be in an SPV wallet or in a full node wallet. Uh, but yeah, controlling them is obviously better. Uh, but it's still not quite as private. And finally, it's sort of the third level is like having your own full node and keeping your own private key. This this is what I'm going to talk about today. Anyway, let me let me do a screen share, and we'll go from there. Here is uh, the Bitcoin dot uh, org en download. Um, this is where you can get the software where you can run a full node. These are this is a full node. Um, uh, you know, uh, software for all sorts of different platforms. You, you don't have to get this one. There's also uh, Bitcoin and BTCD uh, are two other ones that are full node. Uh, you know, that's the that software that's also full node. Um, but this, this one is just one that uh, a lot of people like. Um, make sure after you download it, uh, verify the release signatures. Um, uh, and you know th this is a little bit annoying, but you get you get this file called sha two fifty six sum dot asc, and uh, yeah, this this badly formatted, but it has a bunch of uh, sha two fifty six sums, and you're gonna need to know a little bit of GPG in order to be able to do it. But essentially, um, all right, yeah, yeah. So you're you're gonna need to know some GPG, but. Um, you, you can get the PGP signature and figure out like, okay, here's the begin PGP signature. I think it's uh, signed by Vladimir's uh, public key. Um, but yeah, you, you, can, you can check the SHA-256 sum and make sure. Um, I, I do have a Docker image somewhere that does all of this. Um, but yeah, I would suggest, uh, you know, you make sure you get the software that you're thinking. And th this is an important step. And, if you skip that step, you're sort of uh, trusting in the, you might be trusting in the wrong people or you might be getting man in the middle or something like that. So anyway, uh, this is where you get the software. All right, so um, there's another section on bitcoin.org uh, running a full node and uh, you know the actual instructions on exactly how to do it. Um, they tell you how to do it on Ubuntu. They, there's a section down here for, oh man, that's a really long one, uh, Windows. Uh, there's another one for uh, Mac, I think. No, Windows 8. Um, there's another for Windows 7, amazingly. Um, you know, people still run that, but uh, 
Yeah, and here's OSX. So yeah, I mean, you you have a lot of options, um, and it, and on top of it, you get the Bitcoin Core wallet as well, which uh, which is a full node wallet. It it communicates to your full node instead of depending on somebody else. Um, all right, so that uh, that what are, so you might be wondering at this point, what are the requirements? Well. If you store the entire blockchain, this is an archival node. There, there's a difference between an archival node and a pruned node, and here's what, what that is. An archival node um, stores every single transaction from the beginning of the blockchain to now. Um, and that can be kind of a lot, right? Like here's the blockchain size graph. Um, it's currently almost at 150 gigabytes, um, which you know for a normal desktop isn't actually that much. Uh, and you, you can store it that way. Uh, but there's another option, and it's uh, using prune mode. Um, and this, this requires some configuration, but you can run it in prune mode. But if you run it in prune mode, then essentially it's going to grow with the size of the serialized UTXO set, which, um, you know, which is about 4 gigabytes. I, th I think the uh, prune node will go to something like um, 7 or 8 gigabytes or something like that. So. It ends up being pretty, you know, reasonable, um, and you you can you can run a pruned node, um, uh, and still be a full node. Um, now, when you, when you connect, you're gonna want to connect to some different uh, some other nodes, and here's a listing of all the full nodes that you can connect to uh, right now. Uh, well, I mean, this, th I don't know if this is an exhausted list, but here are some that you can connect to. And you can go to bitnodes.earn.com. This company used to be called 21.co, uh, but they published this very nice list. And if you live like in the United States like I do, you can click United States and connect to any of these. And you can, you can tell um, sort of what, what software they're running by their user agent. Um, I mean, this is not authoritative, but this might be something you can utilize. Uh, but this, this person is uh, using Bitcoin 15.0.1. This one's using 15.1. Um, and you know, there, there are some other ones that, uh, at least none here, but there, there are other uh, ones besides uh, Satoshi, um, that's interesting. Cornell Falcon Network. I, I've never heard of that one, um, but you can write your own, um, uh, your own if you want to. There's Bitcoin ABC. Oh, that's interesting. How how are they connecting to oh, Classic One Two Three BU Cash? Uh, I'm not I'm not sure how they're connecting to the Bitcoin network, but I, I suppose uh, it's possible. Or they they just change their um, you know user agent name, which you can do on command line at any time, and it's it has no authority. Um, but yeah, you can you can look at the different user agents and uh, actually connect to any one that you feel like. Um, and you know these are the different versions that you can connect to, and so on. Um, yeah, I mean, some some of them can be interesting. So BTC Wire is like BTCD. I think Bitcoin is something else. Anyway, um, you you can you you get the idea. But uh, the idea, the point of doing all that is so that you can be self sovereign over your own node. You can you can have um, nodes. Uh, you 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 don't have to trust somebody else to sort of trans transmit. Um, your own transactions. You don't have to trust somebody else to give you sort of a snapshot of other transactions. Uh, um, you you don't have to give up your privacy on exactly what kind of um, you know uh, transactions you're you're making or what addresses you hold and things like that. And that that tends to be pretty important for security uh, because if you lose privacy, um, it's kind of a security hole, right? Like uh, if a bad guy finds out that you have you know, a hundred bitcoins, they're gonna try to come and get it. So uh, it's best to keep your privacy um, as uh, tight as possible. This is what you would call opsec in um, CS terms. Anyway, um, if you want like true uh, full node, you know, uh, privacy, the next level would be like setting up Tor and making sure you connect only over uh, Tor. Um, and that that itself is also like another layer uh, of privacy. 
Um, so yeah, I would say like there's sort of four levels of privacy you can or privacy and security you can have. You can keep it on an exchange, that's pretty bad. Uh, you could keep it in an SPV wallet, that's better, but you lose some privacy. Then you can have it on a full node on your own, uh, which uh, definitely increases your privacy. But you know, I mean, there's still some static analysis people can do based on your IP address. And then you can go on tour, at which point you're you're going to be more or less anonymous as a node. Anyway, um, all all that is uh, you know just sort of giving you an update on you know why you would want a full node and uh, and how you can go make one. Uh, hopefully this this video is useful to you guys. Uh, let's see. There is there any super chat or questions? Okay, um, it's a lot of people arguing. Uh, yeah, I, the instructions are all there. I, I will post the links to all this stuff. Um, all right. Well, uh, yeah, I guess there, there aren't really any questions. So uh, thank you. And this song is done. <laughs>